A hit and run case out of Adams County is now being investigated as a homicide. Thanks for watching. I'm Alexandra Lewis. And I'm Mark Salinger. The crash happened in late May off Federal Boulevard, just north of Highway 76. Authorities say they found 48-year-old Danny Duran in the middle of the road. Now news reporter Jaleesa Irizarry spoke to his family, who was still trying to piece together exactly what happened that night. Some roads taken are easier than others. The path to peace can sometimes feel impossible. He goes, Danny's dead. The coroner's office called said that they found him, or they have him. And we've been looking for answers ever since. Gene Duran remembers the day vividly. The day Colorado State Patrol told him his twin brother, Danny Duran, was killed in a hit and run off Federal Boulevard, just north of 76. And the day. It's hard to believe that somebody got him like this. The circumstances changed. Uh, but it's a reality and uh, nobody's in invincible, you know. Colorado State Patrol says during its investigation of the hit and run crash, information led authorities to believe this may have been a homicide. They handed the case over to the Adams County Sheriff's Office and they say their investigation will, quote, look into the possibility of a hit and run, a separate incident where the victim may have been moved to the road or anything else that comes to light. Uh, first thing that came to my mind was just how absolutely shocking. Julian Duran Cisneros is Danny's son. He admits he didn't know his father well, but he was hoping to change that. Like I just turned 21 years old, you know, getting my adult life going and with him not being there as a kid, I wanted him to be there as an adult. Now Gene hopes to be there. He's a good dude. For his brother. He was a good dude and a lot of people loved him. He vows to stay the course on his journey for answers. Every day I look in the mirror, I see Danny, you know? Every day I look in the mirror, I see Danny. Minute by minute, second by second, I want the truth. The Adams County Coroner's Office says the autopsy report is not complete, so we don't know the exact cause of death that would lead police to, sus to suspect a homicide. The Adams County Sheriff's Office says they are still doing interviews and identifying a person or persons of interest. Reporting in the studio, Jaleesa Rosari, 9 News. And they hope they solve it soon. Jaleesa, thank you. Want to take a live look outside right now. Another day of heat around the metro area, but all that's about to change a little bit. It was hot today. We tallied the 57th 90 degree day in Denver. Uh, record summer, but maybe that's about to change. Yeah, Let's a little check cool in. down. That's right. Weather impact meteorologist Kathy Sabin. Alex, Mark, we have some big changes coming in in the next 48 hours. We are tracking a trough of low pressure, which will replace this dominant ridge, which has brought the heat, the summer heat, and extended the heat wave out through early September. With the trough coming in tomorrow, we'll see the arrival of a cool front that will bring temperatures out of the 90s, where we are today. We're currently 92 in Denver, down into the low 80s, so 10 degrees cooler tomorrow with a good chance of showers. We started at 61 today and have so far warmed to 93. The average is 84 and the record closing in on that record of 97 wind, not a, as big of a factor as what we saw yesterday. So there are no red flag warnings in effect, but it's plenty warm and dry ahead of this cool front, which will bring not only rain, but temperatures down into the 70s by Thursday. So kind of an early preview of fall. And this is the system off to the north and west of us that will continue to bring moisture into the western slope. We're seeing a few light showers over the continental divide. I would call it isolated. Nothing severe. I don't think these are going to make it over the urban corridor today, but tomorrow by 2 33 o'clock in the afternoon, I think we're going to have some active weather here in Denver and a big cool down. So we'll detail the timing and impact of this big weather change coming up in Maine weather in just a few minutes. Right now, a hearing will determine whether there's enough evidence in the case against the man accused of killing two people in a University of Colorado, Colorado Springs dorm room. Nicholas Jordan is accused of the February 16th shootings of his roommate Samuel Knopp and Knopp's friend, Selly Rain Montgomery. Investigators say Jordan and Knopp had gotten into a dispute over cleanliness and smoking inside their dorm room. A Colorado man who killed four people just learned he will spend the rest of his life in prison. Joseph Castorina received four back-to-back -back life sentences for the murders that happened nearly two years ago in Aurora. Let's get to Jeremy Hohola, who was inside the courtroom as the judge gave the defendant his sentence. And Jeremy, apparently some harsh words, too. Yeah, the judge in this case called the defendant a little man with a gun. This was a terrible case that involved the murders of four people because that man wanted to control his ex-girlfriend and it's clear after today 
Joseph Castorania is looking at the prospect of facing the rest of his life behind bars. Castorania was 21 years old at the time back in October of 2022. He broke into the home of his ex-girlfriend and waited for her family to arrive from a party. As they arrived, he killed three family members and then he killed another man who was renting space on the property. The killing shocked the community as Castorena fled to Mexico where he escaped authorities for about two months until he was arrested and brought back to the United States. This afternoon, the judge gave him what the prosecution asked for, and that is four back-to-back -back life sentences without the possibility of parole, one for each murder victim. Castorena was also convicted of attempted murder of his ex-girlfriend who was not killed. She survived and testified during his trial. The judge added on another 24 years in prison for that attempted murder charge. A family member of the victims called today sentencing justice. It's a comfort. We feel comfort is a very good day for us. You know, we feel peace that finally justice has been served. There's a lot of emotions going on at the same time. You know, we're just glad that we're at the end of it. Yeah, looks like we uh, lost Jeremy's mic there, but Jeremy, thank you for the update. We appreciate it. Happening now, advocates are rallying for the people living in apartment buildings in Aurora that have been at the center of controversy, getting some national attention. The city of Aurora is trying to get an emergency order to declare the buildings a criminal nuisance. Advocates are holding a news conference with people who live at three complexes at 12th and Dallas, Nome and 16th, and Helena and 13th. CBZ Management owns all of those properties. Advocates say the tenants have received violent threats over claims that Venezuelan gangs have taken over the complex. Police there say there is gang activity around these apartments, but the city has refuted the claims that Venezuelan gangs have completely taken over the buildings. The city already shut down the Nome Street building last month. The city deemed it uninhabitable and forced 300 people to find a new home. Coming up tonight on Next, we'll dive deeper into some of the misinformation about what's happening that's been spreading in Aurora and outside groups coming to Colorado. We are exactly one week away from the first presidential debate. Today, the Harris campaign is launching a bus tour in Palm Beach, Florida, with several surrogates promoting access to reproductive rights. Former President Donald Trump has a town hall event scheduled for tomorrow. The debate will air next Tuesday night on ABC. And right now, it is unclear if this will be the only debate. We know Trump proposed two others with Fox and NBC, but Harris has not agreed yet to those dates. Today, Republican Congresswoman Lauren Boebert faced off to against her Democratic opponent, Trisha Calvaris, in their first CD4 debate. Today's debate focused on issues like affordable housing and the economy. Boebert and Calvaris offered their own opinions on government spending and what Congress should act on. The two candidates also clashed over support for the VA health care system. The district leans heavily Republican, so Congresswoman Boebert is the heavy favorite to win in the election in November.